All roads lead to the property show brought to you by the privateproperty.co.za. The, the show is happening on the 27th to the 28th of August 2022 at the Santon Convention Center. Remember, you can also join virtually from anywhere you are in the world. Tickets are available at the propertyshow.co.za. Good evening th and thank you so much for joining us for the Private Property Show t podcast tonight. Uh, my name is Stumi and tonight we are talking saving and investing in the time of rising interest rates. But before we jump into our conversation, remember to engage with us and interact with us. Send us your comments, your questions, anything that you would like to know or something that you may be struggling with currently in the property space. Send us those questions and you could stand in line to win 500 Rand cash and the winner will be announced tomorrow and also remember you can scoop those tickets to the to the property show that is happening in santon so tonight we are talking in interest rates and they're, they're, that they're rising and in fact i have somebody who is going to take us through this i'm sitting with tammy Kaile, who is the head of savings and investments from absa bank tammy thank you so much for joining us good evening uh thank you to me and thank you um and hello to the listeners as well and the viewers Thank you. Let's let's go straight into the conversation and talk about our interest rates. You know, interest rates have been rising at a rapid rate in South Africa. And a lot of people are asking themselves, why is the Reserve Bank doing this? Um, do you maybe want to take us through some of that rationale? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for this. Um, I think what what we need to do is, um, you know, as, as viewers and as people look at what's happening globally, um, you know, first and foremost, I mean, I think you can see um, you know, that the interest rates are rising all over. Um, and that's also being informed, you know, by um, the level of inflation going up, um, you know, globally as well. I mean, I think you, as you can see today, um, you know, it, it was announced that the, the inflation rates, um, inflation rather went up um, by 7.4%, you know, whereas uh, the previous month it was 6.5%. Uh, mm. You know, this is out of the um of the reserve banks uh, mandate uh, and their mandate generally is to is to maintain maintain inflation between three and six percent you know already at six and a half and then seven seven point four percent it's already quite significantly high um sure now the banks mandates generally is driven by making sure that um, they contain inflation and interest rates um, is one of the levers. Um, there are many um, that they utilize, but the, one of the major ones is um, is interest rates. You know, so so where inflation goes up, interest rates tends to go up. Um, you know, uh, and also as inflation goes down, then of course uh, interest rates will also tend to uh, to follow that that particular trend. And that really is the driver. Um, I mean, I think everybody can see. You know, if we talk about why inflation is going up, you know, because that's mm. the, that's the of what what's really is happening, um, again, if if viewers look at uh, globally, um, you know the supply chain. Everybody's been talking about you know the last couple of months, you know last eighteen months or so, um, you know constraint that's been felt there um, globally. But also recently, you know the conflicts that are currently happening in Europe, you know uh, between Russia and and Ukraine. Uh, I think they're also um, making uh, matters a, a lot more um, worse than than we we all anticipated. Um, and, and as a result, you know, you know, economies are trying to um, to contain this inflation, and interest rates, you know, increases usually would be the one that gets to be uh, utilized mostly. Sure. And with all that is happening, what is the best way one can save and make sure that they have some even um, uh, savings that they can use in times of need? Yeah. So, I guess with interest rates going up. Um, it, it really is depends on it depends on which side of the fence you are you are at you know so if you are on the side of um, of borrowing uh, fence where you've got quite a lot of debts uh, with interest rates going up uh, naturally this will um, negatively impact you because um, you know the cost of that loan uh, suddenly goes up um, you know and and if you're on the other side of the fence you know where you are you you've got savings and you are investing. You know, interest rates generally are a very welcome, you know, um, uh, thing. You know, as as they go up, you know, the benefits for you as a consumer will also, um, you know, increase in terms of the returns that you get. Um, so it it depending. I think some some consumers may be, of course, be on both sides of the fence. You know, sitting in the middle of the fence. Um, you know, because they are doing a bit of 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 borrowing, but also doing um, a bit of uh, of saving and investing. You know, so so I think that's that's the first thing. You know, you've got to have to have a look and see where you're sitting. Um, you know, and and then 
a decision of uh, of what you want to do, um, you know, going forward, you know, will all be driven by the goals um, that you have, your financial goals, you know, um, you know, for yourself. I think that will be the starting point um, that you will have to look at, you know, as a consumer. And then, of course, you know, looking at where the um, the interest rates are best, you know, uh, positioned, you know, um, for you and the amount that you have, and also. Um, in terms of uh, accessibility of those funds as well, does play a significant role in where you would put the funds, you know, um, as well for yourself. Yeah, and talking about putting the funds in different places, if if someone has disposable cash currently, where would you say is the best place to put them? Would they maybe put it um, in a house loan or, or home loan rather, savings or investment account, or even maybe try and acquire new properties and maybe a new investment? What, what would you advise someone to do in these times? Well, firstly, it's a good problem to have, you know, so when you <laughs> when you have extra cash, I, mean, I think, um, you know, consumers are, are really struggling right now um, with mm. the rising, and as I think we've spoken about, the rise in, in, um, in petrol prices, you know, um, and, and just the living costs, you know, generally, um, you know, have been on the increase, you know, in the last, uh, last while, um, you know, so that's the, that's the first thing. And if you do have, you know, some money that's left, um, I think, you know, it is important that you utilize that quite wisely. It's important that you put it away for, um, for, for some rainy days, you know, um, I think yeah. what we normally call emergency funds. Now, in terms of that decision, you know, um, around where do you do it? And again, back to those who are sitting in the middle of the fence um, who have a bit of borrowing, but also have a bit of savings. I and mean, I think, mm. you know, the question that gets them to be asked, which is similar to your question is, you know, do I put it in my home loan or do I, yeah. you know, save it? you know, um, in a savings account or an investment account. You know, I think these things depend, you know, um, I think we always encourage both that you must do, um, you know, uh, servicing of your debts whilst you're also doing a bit of saving because saving really is a, is a, is, a, um, is not easy. You know, it's not easy to save. And so it's important that that behavior of saving gets to be encouraged and gets to be, um, you know, adopted fairly early on um, as soon as mm-hmm. you can. At the same time, you know, if you look at the APSA, um, you know, home loan as an example, with um, you know, with the flexi reserve, what it does help you with is that you can actually put extra money that if you need to access it at a later stage, you will then you know have access to it. Now, the good thing about that is because you know, as you put extra more more money into that home loan account, um, you are reducing the capital that is utilized to calculate you know your interest rate. So what it does is it saves you. Um, a bit more interest interest costs or interest expense. Um, but what it also does is, is that it, it it reduces, you know, um, over time, of course, um, you know, the the time it takes for you to repay or settle your um, your home loan uh, as well. Yeah. So there is uh, the benefits of putting it into a, a home loan account, you know, so that you, you almost, you know, uh, benefit as I've just indicated. But at the same time, putting it in a savings account, a bit in a savings account, you know, so that you've got, something on the side that will help you for some kind of emergencies that you might be experiencing. Sure. No, great tips there. And thank you so much for sharing that. And one of the other things that you normally hear people do is using a credit card um, as a savings account where people now put money and then use it at a later stage. Would you say that this is wise? Um, so, so two things to that. Um, mm. You know, first, the, you know, if you look at the at the credit card offer, um, I- including the APSA credit card, I think mainly, you know, with us, mm-hmm. um, the APSA credit card, both gold and, and platinum uh, and premium, rather, um, you know, what they offer is is the 50, 57 days, you know, free interest, you know, um, you know, for you. So if you if you spend, you know, um, the 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 limits or the funds that are available to you from a credit card point of view. And, uh, and you repay that within the 57 day, you know, you don't pay any interest out of that, you know, um, that mm. spend. That's a huge benefit already. You know, it means that yeah. you get to utilize those funds for free. That, that's a starting point, a very wise and savvy um, approach to using credit. Um, mm. But to put extra money, you know, um, uh, beyond just, you know, above your limits, um, you know, I think what, um, you know, what that does for you is that you don't get any extra inc- interest, you know, out of the credit card if it sits with the credit balance, you know, um, which is your own money, um, you know. So that will encourage, you know, um, you know, consumers and customers that they actually look at the alternative, you know, which is to put it into a, a separate savings account where you will get to earn interest out of as well. 
Sure. And where can one get a prime um, rate in terms of investing and savings? And if one, how does one even qualify for it? How can, how can one make, them, make sure that they are ready and they are a good candidate for it? <laughs> yeah, so, so I think, you know, um, with prime, you know, prime yeah. is currently at 0.25 um, yes. as we speak. Um, and, um, you know, if you if you were to put it into an investment account, you'll have to just really think about, you know, um, where you can get a return that is that significant. Um, mm. You know, um, and I think there are a lot of options that you can have. You know, the one, you know, if you want to put it into a, a, a banking environment, you know, you could have um, a, a fixed deposit, you know, that you can put in for uh, at least about three years, you know, 36 months, you know, behind it, you know, if you've got a lump sum. You know that does give you, um, you know, the um, the benefits, you know, of of an interest that uh, that is higher than than prime. Um, you know, so so I think you know it might be worth a while to you know for a consumer to look into that as an option. The other, you know, so you know if you want to really get you know uh, returns that are significantly higher that way, you might also want to you know look at um, at investing in equities. You know, I think you know APSA stock brokers you know do offer. Mm. Um, for you to be able to to invest and i think the returns you know do have an upside but of course they do have the downside you know that you know um when you put it into equities you know because that you could lose your capital but at the same time the returns that you could get you know um if things go well you know can far exceed you know um a, a, a prime rate that we we're looking at as of today um so mm -hmm. so again it all it depends firstly on on the on the consumer's appetite you know for risk um, but I think if you want something that's safe and, and secure and, and capital guaranteed, you know, a fixed deposits, you know, is one of the products that you could um, really consider. And, and I think you'll need to consider somewhere between, you know, two years and, and above and as well as three years, you know, so I think it will give you a, a very sizable. And what's nice there, you know, just maybe if I may add to, uh, to me is that, um, you know, those are above inflation, you know, so what you're yeah. getting, you know, at fixed deposits, you know, um, at, at 8.25 as an example, you know, um, you know, you're getting far uh, better than than what inflation is sitting at at 7.4. So you get real growth. You know, um, um, because that's one of the things that consumers would want to look out for as well. Line. So sure. Tammy, we were talking about some of those factors to consider when you are investing. You were going. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was <laughs> saying. Uh, you know, I think time is is quite an important thing that people tend to 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 understate. I and mean, I think yeah. give yourself time to view your investment, uh, making sure that it's still giving you what you're looking for. Um, and then, of course, that it's still, um, you know, fulfilling the goals, you know, that you had set for yourself, you know, in the in the first place. That That's the the one aspect, you know, for us. And then then the second, you know, piece is, is also around risks, you know, appetites that you have, you know, so if you are um, uh, happy to take some risk and some returns, you know, um, then you might actually look into into things like equities, as we've stated. But if you if you're wanting something that's secure, like capital guaranteed, but also with an upside, you know, um, of interest benefit that you will get, um, then you would look at, at things like our fixed deposits, you know, um, and and our tax free savings uh, savings account, you know, um, as well, um, which are easily accessible on on our websites, you know, and our banking app at the same time as well. So and of course, you know, I think if you want to do anything that's you know further than that, I think what we generally do encourage you know, uh, consumers is to engage with our financial advisors. You know, um, I think people tend to shy away from speaking to a financial advisor, assuming that it is quite costly. Um, but the reality is that having a conversation is not, is not what costs you. Um, you know, and I think it's worth, you know, uh, having those conversations and get guidance, you know, um, as much as you can. Ultimately, it's your decision, but you do need to get guidance. That the last piece for me would be, you know, an assessment of whether you've got any emergency funds, you know, so it's no use you know, taking all of your money that you already have and putting it into investments that might end up not being too secure um, and you don't have, in, you know, emergency funds. And should any emergencies happen, now you need to go tap into that investment as well again, you know. So, so we want, you know, we, we do tend to encourage that consumers do look into that as well. You know, so those there's a couple of things that you can look at, but those are the core that I think, you know, uh, would be important for anyone to, to start to considering, you know, before they make um, a lifelong, you know, decisions around their money. Yeah. And just speaking about financial advisors, um, would it be wise for somebody to look for an independent one or uh, do, should would would APSA be um, offering some of these services and how would one go about procuring services like that? 
Well, well, I think it's important that you get a financial advisor that you are comfortable yeah. with. I mean, I think, yeah. uh, as a as a consumer, you know, somebody you are you are comfortable to open up and and provide them as much information as they um, are asking. You know, in order for them to to be able to give you the best possible assessment and and mm. and maybe steer or guiding, you know, so outcome. Um, I mean, I think ourselves as APSA, uh, we we have financial advisors available uh, across the, the uh, all of our branches, you know, our branch network, um, and they actually even can, you know, be uh, in a position to come to your location to have conversations, you know, around this as well, you know. So, so I think we do encourage, and they and they come actually uh, free of charge. You know, there is uh, no fee for an engagement point, um, you know, so where an assessment needs to be done. Um, I think it's important that you know, um, as I've indicated, that consumer take advantage, consumers take advantage of this, um, and and I think a decision thereafter can be made. Um, but yeah. I think to your question, is it important? I think it's super critical because there's so much information that's out there, um, and it can be overwhelming. You know, for me as a person who works um, uh, and I do not necessarily have the time to to consume. Uh, all the content that's available on on uh, on the websites, you know, um, around investments, you know, and I do need to speak to someone, you know, if you're not calling us directly, you can even engage with the advisors in in, in as uh, as I've just indicated. Sure. And, you know, talking about education, it's very important that we t we teach young kids as well to start this from a young age. And are there any maybe um, young children or even uh, young adults uh, tailored products? And how can maybe parents, you know, educate their children in terms of how not to succumb to, to brand pressures and, you know, peer pressures on how they, they spend their money and really just contribute to, to building the family wealth and building uh, wealth, you know? So, so it's it's interesting you bring that point uh, to me because uh, I mm. think children and and um, you know and and kids are, are really impressionable, right? You know, yeah. at the, at a very uh, young age, and and when they look at their parents, they they see heroes. You know, um, mm. you know, I think you know, yes, there is a, a lot of pressure from peers and and at school and and wherever that they um, they engage with their, with with their peers. Um, but I think at home there is um, an even more significant, you know, um, influence that can um, that can be uh, achieved. You know, so I do encourage, you know, at all times that you know uh, parents do engage, you know, on the financial uh, management, money management, you know, topics with uh, with their children. Um, I mean, as early as they can understand, you know, um, you know, when you talk about money. I think it's also important, you know, that the um, the conversations. Um, with uh, with children, you know, um, uh, are tailored in, in decision making, you know, for the family decision making for them as kids, um, you know, at all times, um, and and I think that's important, you know. Um, mm. And then the second thing for me is is really just um, you know encouraging them and and also making them aware that money is not infinite. It is it is finite. Um, at some point, it does come to an end. Um, mm. You know, especially if you spend it, you know, uh, haphazardly. And, and without really planning and, and controlling yourself. Um, so we think that that's important. It's important also to make it fun. You know, um, if you don't make it fun, and that's when, you know, they tend to switch off um, and they start to do their own things. And I think it's important that we do um, apply the, the, those principles. And then of sure. course, um, it's important that you almost create a separate account, you know, um, specifically for them let them have experiment and experience the use of a card, the use of uh, of an account. You know, um, you know, we've got a mega U account. You know, um, that we have as APSA that um, that that is tailored. You know, for uh, for children, and that can be utilized to put money in. You know, uh, and also the core contribution and utilizing chores. You know, to try and encourage them to know that you know money doesn't fall you know off the sky that you've got to work for it you know um so give them chores you know give them some kind of reward and let them see that going in into the into the account you know allow them to play with the tools like the app you know the the mobile app the banking app from an app's point of view and and i think that that in my in my mind is a starting point um to making saving a culture in their lives you know as a as a way of living in their lives uh, whereas you know to uh, to leave it and they start when they are older, um, I think there's a lot more difficulties you know that you in, that you would encounter you know as an adult you know in in, in starting to save when you had not been used to to it. Um, so those will, will be probably the you know the key um, you know items that I would really think you know uh, parents would need to consider you know um, in money management. Just make it part of the life and day to day um, you know engagement with your with your kids or your children as well. 
Great stuff. Thank you so much for that. We've spoken extensively about um, the investment vehicles that APSA offers for saving and investment. So any last words or advice that you would give anybody who wants to get into the space of investing or even maybe pivot their investment journey because they've been investing and now they really just would like to take it to, to, to a new level or new horizon altogether. Any last words? Yeah, so the reality is the cost of living is really uh, escalating. You know, um, someone thinking I uh, might not have enough, um, you know, money to save, um, you know, you might look at alternatives, you know, um, like, you know, getting additional income stream, you know, um, on the side, um, which could actually be helpful to supplement, you know, um, to cover, you know, for some of the expenses. I think that's at the at the level of, you know, wanting to get yourself from one paycheck to the other. Um, I think as a starting point, but someone who already are saying I've invested, I've got enough, I've got a surplus, you know, um, that I really want to see what I can do. I think, uh, again, APSA offers the ability to buy property for investments, you know, and I think that uh, that also can be taken advantage of and, and, and be done, um, you know, and also other alternative businesses that can be done. But I think the key thing for me is that, you know, we've got products that allow us to invest for long term. You know, um, I think about tax-free uh, savings products that, you know, um, uh, we have in our space that allow you to, to invest, get the returns, but at the same time, you know, um, and not pay tax out of that, uh, those returns as well. You know, I think it's, it's almost a double benefits that you get to achieve. And I think that consumers must think about that, you know, um, but actually the last part, you know, that for me um, is, is even more critical is that have a look at your, at your financial, um, you know, situation and review it with the aim, you know, to to see whether there are any opportunities to open up capacity for saving. Um, you know, I think we, we always talk about just have a look at your bank statement, you know, just see whether is there anything that you think, you know, you should be not be paying for that is actually in your statement. You know, that's one of the one aspect of reviewing, you know, your financial lab and also then speaking to an advisor, you know, to try and get as much, you know, um, as much guidance from them as well. Thanks. Tommy, thank you so much. Such great insights that we have received from you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your, your wealth of knowledge because it's definitely a wealth of knowledge. Have a good evening. No, thank you. Thank you to me and thank you to the viewers and uh, listeners. Thank you so much. So review your spend and look for that opportunity to save as well as invest some of that disposable income. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode right here on the, on the Private Property Podcast. Till the next time we see you every weekday, 7 p.m., have a good night. Yeah.